My name is Jonathan Goforth, and today we're gonna to talk about the three biggest mistakes a lot of realtors make. Let's jump right into this. The first one, I want you to write down everything you're gonna do. Most realtors don't do this. You don't have to be all fancy and type it into your phone. Get paper and jot down notes. This is what I'm gonna do. Think about it while you're watching TV. Just have paper with you. Jot down, this is what, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do three open houses this month. I'm gonna do three more next month. I'm gonna commit to that. This is a list of what you're gonna do. This is different than your goals. You already know what your goals are. You, you created your goals when you were getting into real estate. It's, it's the motivation that made you go take real estate classes and go pass the test and here you are. Most agents don't write down what they're gonna do. And so they never have a clear direction. This is what I'm gonna do today. This is what I'm gonna do this week. I want you to think about, here's what I'm gonna do for the next 30 days and 60 days. Don't go any farther out than that. If you're not used to writing this down, concentrate on the next 30 days. Here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to call an agent in my office. I want to ask them questions. I want to watch six videos later today about how to do an open house on YouTube videos. Figure out what it is you're gonna do. I love, I love watching YouTube videos. And so I have a goal. I'm going to watch so many things today because I wanna see what other people are doing. Write it down. I will tell you this and make this promise to you. If you don't write it down, it won't happen. Whether it's your goals, long-term goals, short-term goals, your daily assignments. That's what I'm talking about. Your short-term to-do list. What am I going to do? Write it down. Now, you'll love number two. Consistency is the most important thing in real estate. It's the most important thing to, to doing anything, really. If, if you're trying to lose weight, for example, you've got to be consistent. You can't cheat five days and then eat healthy on two of them. If you're working out, it's got to be consistent or you'll never see any results. It's the same thing in real estate. You have to be consistent. If you're going to do open houses, you do them all the time. You do them consistently because one or two of them doesn't work. You might have eight open houses in a row that are bad and then number nine, you pick up a buyer and you sell them a house. All those open houses are now successful because you were consistent. I will share this with you. Every single successful agent in your office, they are good at this. They are consistent at what they're good at. Maybe they do expireds. They call on expired listings. How often do they do it? Consistently. They call on them all the time. It's part of their routine. Maybe they call on for sale by owners. They look up every FISBO they can find and they call them consistently. You have to be good at taking long-term rejection so that you can keep doing this over and over and over because what will happen? We get frustrated. You know, you are in sales and the product is you. The product isn't the houses. Somebody else will list the houses if you don't. You're not selling all these houses out there. You're selling yourself your image, it's your brand. That's what you're marketing. You need to do it consistently. Let's say you are advertising yourself to your name list, your circle of influence. You've got, uh, you're doing it through some mailings. How often do you send a mailing to your, your COI list? How about once a year? Does that sound good? You're not gonna get anything off that. It's not consistent enough. When I was new, I sent out something every month in the mail. I contacted everyone. Now, I've been doing this 23 years. And in the beginning, it was a rough go to get started, just like a lot of new agents now. It takes time at first. Our expectations are not in alignment. We think, oh, I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna make a killing at this. I'm gonna show everybody else how you do this. I'm gonna make it fast. I'm gonna sell so many houses in the first three months. I will show everybody how it's done that first year with some record sales. Well, that would be awesome. And hopefully that does happen for you. It did not happen for me. It took me two full years of selling 
almost nothing, before my third year started clicking. Then my fourth year got really, really good. That's, let's say three, three years of me working like crazy consistently, door to door, farming a neighborhood, uh, on and on and on. Everything that I did in the beginning, I did it with consistency. Here is where consistency becomes a problem. We get frustrated. We are so into immediate gratification. We've got microwaves. We've got everything you can do is immediate gratification in our culture. And long-term gratification, which requires consistency, is hard work. That's why we have fast food. And this is also why we have so many overweight people. It's hard to diet consistently. How many people do you know who have gone on a diet repeatedly? <laughs> another diet. They're on another diet. I will tell you this. If you put together your list of what you're going to do and you stick to it consistently, this means months, months of effort on the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over. Are you going to sell houses? Yes. You're going to sell houses. If you're about to start a diet, you want to lose 40 pounds. The first big question you need to ask yourself, can I lose 40 pounds? Is that possible? Well, it is possible. The answer is yes. If you put together a list, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to eat this and this and this, and I'm going to get rid of all the bad food. No more chips. No more McDonald's, no more Taco Bell, on and on and on, all the places where a lot of us like to eat. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to change my habits, and I'm going to put effort into being consistent. If you're trying to lose weight, what happens at first? It's miserable, but at first you might lose a pound or two. Then you realize you're not seeing any results. You're just not, and you get frustrated. And the first thing we do is cheat. We stop being consistent and you fall, you fall off the wagon a little bit. Dieting is just like being a good real estate, real estate agent. It takes consistent consistency, constant consistency all the time. Having a daily grind of what you're going to be doing. Don't fall off that bandwagon. Here's what's frustrating. Let's say you're dieting and you've lost five pounds. And life's been really good. It's been hard, but you've lost five pounds. Now you've hit a plateau and you are frustrated and you want to quit. You want to quit. You're not seeing results, but you know you've got a plan in place. If you stick with it for another week, you don't have a full meal at 11 o'clock at night. You're not going to fast food. You've eliminated soda. Your sugar content's going down. Doing all these things, are you going to lose weight? Yeah, but it takes time. Are you gonna do a little exercise? Yeah, let's toss that in. COVID's here, you know, I go to the gym all the time still, but just walking around the block would be a huge, wonderful improvement. If you do that, how often? Once a month. I'm gonna walk around the block once a month. You're not gonna see any results. But if you do this five times a week, walking around the block, and then faster, you go faster, maybe even a slow jog so you sweat, are you gonna lose weight? Yes, you are. But you gotta stick with it. You gotta keep consistent. Now a month has passed and you've lost two or three more pounds, but you don't give up. You don't get frustrated. You don't compare your results to anyone else and you stay consistent. Two months have passed and now three months have passed and you're doing great. Are you losing weight? Yes. It's just like in real estate. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. You're going to get frustrated. Don't do that. The only people you'll compare yourselves to are other agents who are selling more. Don't do that. I do that all the time. It drives me crazy. It's very demotivating. It's frustrating. Stick to your plan, what you're going to do. That is the number one thing right there that will make you a, the biggest success ever in real estate. Now let's talk about number three. So if you're liking my video, please subscribe to my channel and please give my video a like. That would make me feel good. <laughs> Let's talk about communication. This is 
an area where so many realtors fail. And I bet a lot of you watching my video are about to give me a big amen on this because a lot of times it's, okay, I go on a, on a listing appointment that it, it's expired or they fired their agent. And the biggest complaint, that, that seller just wants to gripe about their previous agent. Why? Because they never heard from them. They would leave messages for their agent and it would be a day or two before that agent even responds back, even on a text. And it's infuriating to a lot of sellers when their agent is not immediately in contact with them. Their level of communication is too slow and it comes off as just pure laziness. It's the same problem, let's say it's my listing and I'm working with a buyer's agent and I we're negotiating on, on various things and I need questions answered and I leave messages and it's day three and I'm leaving another message and I'm sending more texts and I am just going out of my mind. I've got to figure out, I've got to make a plan of whatever it is I need information about. So many agents are just either <laughs> lazy or they follow their own timetable that is just not acceptable with doing real estate. Uh, another thing of bad communication I've noticed is uh, agents who buy leads. Keep in mind, a lot of the, uh, by the way, buying leads is a great source of uh, fast business because everybody is looking to buy a house. A lot of the, the, the clients who are wanting somebody to contact them is because they're not hearing back from whoever they're leaving messages for. A lot of times I, uh, I've noticed a client will leave messages for a listing agent. They've got questions about this house. The listing agent never calls them back, never never contact them. So they resort to an online system like realtor.com or Zillow or whatever it is that's out there that they're trying to communicate with anybody to help them. And so the lead comes to you because you're buying leads. All they have are questions. They can't get anybody to call them back. It's another reason of bad communication. It's one of the things that gives our industry kind of a bad reputation is a lot of agents, they're just bad at communication. They don't contact the client back. If you can get really good at communication and give a level of an experience with your client of good immediate conversations all the time, you will thrive in this business. It will set you apart from most of the competition. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give my video a like. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you have fun selling a lot of houses. Thanks.